Hey there guys! So, in my previous D&D video, I said I was gonna make a video, maybe, about helping people be dungeon masters, like if it's your first time. Now I know that being a dungeon master can be super overwhelming at first. I've been DMing for years with many different groups of people, but I started out by being completely lost and having little to no help. Now I don't want you guys to feel like that, so here are my top 10 tips for a beginner dungeon master. Alright, number one, get a DM screen. Yeah, fun fact, but these things aren't just for looks. They're actually extremely useful for any DM, not just a beginner. The screen serves as kind of a barrier between you and your players. It helps you keep secrets, hide your roles, but also it has a lot of useful information like tables, charts, things like that that you don't have to look inside the book every time you need to reference them. You can either make your own with useful notes or you can buy one for the game that you're playing. Trust me, it is so nice to have certain bits of info right there in front of you at your fingertips. One cheap way to do it is just take like two cardboard folders and like staple them or tape them together or just use like two binders. There's a million ways to do it on the cheap. Now here are a few key bits of information that you should put on your screen that I think might help you guys a lot. First thing is difficulty ranges. Now have a range of the difficulty of tasks that your players are going to encounter. This can be found in a core rule book for whatever game you're playing. Now the second thing to put on your screen that's really useful are male and female names. Make a list of a handful of male names and a handful of female names. And if you guys have been watching our show, you'll know that I don't do this because I'm an idiot. I don't name the stupid random characters, but then they go ahead and ask what their name is and I don't have an answer. And that's because I don't have it on my screen. Now most pre-made screens like the one that I have have like this name generator, but this usually ends up making names that are stupid and don't make any sense. You know, names like now, Kel R. Also a good thing to have are random encounter tables. Have a table of encounters for when the party is traveling or if there's a lull in the gameplay. If people are just kind of sitting around not doing anything, throw one of your encounters at them. You could do like a pack of ravenous beasts like wolves or, you know, boars or bears or something. You can do bandits or you can even have an encounter that isn't hostile like a traveling merchant or a mythical beast that's just like flying in the distance. Even if it's something that they aren't interacting with, it makes your world a lot more believable. One thing that I also think is super useful that I didn't realize was useful until I started playing Edge of the Empire is a weapon damage and gear prices table. Basically a list of weapons and gear and items, how much they cost, what they do, things like that. You can print off a table for weapon stats for whatever game you're playing, and this way you always know how much damage a weapon's gonna do, or how much gold they cost. So say you just have like a random goblin in this pack of goblins, but instead of a mace, he has a longsword. You know how much a longsword does damage-wise because it's right there in front of you. You don't have to look it up if you don't know. Now some people have made printable screens that you can just look up, print them out and then tape them to whatever you're going to use. And you can use those if you feel overwhelmed and don't want to check the book back and forth. Just remember that a screen is basically a cheat sheet that no one's going to yell at you for using. Alright, so number two tip is going to be to know your stuff. Now if you know the game you're playing, like the back of your hand, it will always show. And granted, getting to know D&D comes from just playing a lot of D&D. And I'm not saying that you should be a robot and just download all the info into your brain and cram it into your head. That's not possible. But make it seem like you know what you're doing to your players. And you can fake it if you have to. The thing is, they're not going to call you out because you usually do know more than them. Become familiar with the rules of whatever game you're trying to play. This comes from reading the player's guide or core rule book of your game of choice. Read these front to back. There is no substitute for sitting down, reading the book, and learning everything inside. Now this is doubled if you're doing a pre-made adventure. You have to read the whole adventure ahead of time. You can't just wing it and like do it as you go along. It doesn't really work that way. The games are not designed to be played sporadically that way. You have to know what's coming before you throw it at them. Another reason why knowing your stuff is important is so that players know that the rules are being followed. So if you run a, you know, oh well, just fuck it campaign where you loosely follow the rules and just let the players do whatever they want, there's little risk on their part. Yes, letting your players suplex the dragon is super fun, but you gotta make it hard to do. Don't just give them whatever they want just because they want to do it. Follow whatever rules you can because if they succeed on everything because you don't know how else to run things, it stops being a game and they will gradually lose interest, believe me. Number three, do not control their characters. Avoid telling players what they do 
or how their characters feel before hearing what they say first. If they don't want their character to be afraid of ghosts, don't narrate a ghost encounter with, you feel afraid, or anything like that. If they don't say that they're going to do something, don't assume. The players will be way more satisfied by being in full control of their character's actions and feelings. Now that goes directly into number four, how do you kill him? Simply put, ask your players how they do things. Get detailed instructions on how they're going to do stuff. If they're casting a spell, ask them, okay, how are you casting this spell? You know, do you take the energy from the earth? You know, are you shooting it out of your staff? Little flavor decisions that help them flesh out their character. Let your players narrate how they're killing the enemies that they've dealt the finishing blow on. If they've been fighting someone for two hours, give them the added satisfaction of beating that person. It doesn't mean much for your story if they say, I slice the goblin straight down the middle, as opposed to you just telling them, you've killed the last goblin. That's it. This extends to smaller actions too, like when they walk into a tavern, are they throwing the door open loudly, or did they just kind of sleek inside with their hoods up? Small detailed descriptions of their actions can help players flesh out their characters and get more comfortable playing them. Number five, voice acting. Please use voices and accents for your characters. It doesn't matter if you're not good at it. You're not being judged by a grand committee. I'm not saying you have to be Steve Blum. I'm saying that voices never take away from the DMing experience. Using a cheesy voice or accent will make your NPCs and villains stand out from each other. Plus, most importantly, it shows that you are invested in the game and that you're having fun with it. If you open yourself up to the silliness, it'll help players who are kinda like, you know, uncomfortable with being in a role-playing environment. It's a little added detail that shows that you care, and the fact that you care will influence the players a lot. Number six, snacks and breaks. Let people eat, drink, and relax. Most DMs would say, don't let people sit on their phones because they can't pay attention to my story. But you know what, it, what, who, what does it matter if one person didn't pay attention to the story? That's, that's on them. You know, if they're the kind of person who would prefer to do that, just let it be. They're not going to be on their phone the whole time if you're telling a good story anyway. As long as nobody's disrupting the game, just let them do whatever they want. It doesn't really matter. Remember that this is a game, and people are supposed to be having fun with their friends while you're doing it. You wouldn't ban cell phones from a game of Monopoly, so it's really not that different here. Also, snacks and drinks can get people in a gaming mood. You don't want D&D sessions to feel like group meetings. You want them to feel like game night. Also, don't be adverse to taking a break every few hours. Role-playing takes a lot out of people, so for really long sessions, everybody's gonna want to recharge their batteries for a few minutes. Number seven, take your time. This is something that I mess up with a lot. Don't rush yourself while you're in the moment. Now, if they ask you a question that you didn't think of ahead of time, don't be afraid to take a second to come up with your response. Sometimes snappy responses can end up contradicting other information that you've already given or are planning to give. Number eight, make the first adventure a pre-made adventure. If you're trying to make your first ever D&D session and you can't come up with a good adventure, just start them with the pre-made adventure. These are way better than some people give them credit for, and you can move away from them at any time. Starter kits are out for a lot of the main role-playing games, so don't be afraid to grab one of these and run a basic adventure for the first, like, session or two. Then you can branch out once you and your players are a bit more comfortable with them. Even major D&D podcasts do this. Most of the D&D podcasts and shows that I've seen that are running 5th edition end up starting off with the Lost Minds of Fandelver and then just start doing their own thing after that. It's in the starter box, I'm sure you can find it online somewhere if you need it. Number 9. Don't be afraid to be vanilla. Now you might be afraid to have your party go into caves, fight goblins, retrieve treasure. It might seem like kind of old school, you know, vanilla stuff. The thing is, if you're with a group that likes traditional fantasy stories like Lord of the Rings or it's their first time playing an RPG, they are going to love acting out these basic scenarios themselves. These kinds of adventures are comfortable and fun, and they're what people are used to. They never end up the way you think they will either. There's always one or two new players that want to kill everything they see or try to break the game that you've made. Maybe they decide to keep the magical artifact that they're supposed to destroy. Maybe they want to befriend the evil sorcerer and help him kidnap princesses. Also, don't be afraid to steal story ideas from books, shows, movies, anything. If you like an element from a book you just read, then just steal it. You're not posting your game on turnitin.com. You can steal ideas just to make your game more fun for your players. Now, this is the most important thing I can say, but at the end of the day, their enjoyment is your number one job as a DM. Yes, you can write a crazy, intricate story, but if they don't like it, then it's your fault. 
Sometimes people just want to go in, kill some goblins, slay a dragon, take the treasure, save the princess, stuff like that. Those things are really fun, and you can add little nuances to them. Make the princess a huge jerk. Maybe she doesn't want to get rescued. You know, things like that. Start off in a traditional way, twist it by the end of it. Either way, use vanilla tropes to help with your storytelling. Now, this is the last tip, and it's the most important one. But number 10 is, prepare for your players to ruin all of your plans. This is the number one rule of DMing, and any DM will tell you that most of the time, things are never gonna go the way that you want them to. Now, as a DM, I like to pride myself on my ability to react to unexpected situations and try my best to make them actually help the story that I'd planned in the first place. Chances are, this is something that you'll learn as you DM more games, but try not to overplan your plot or characters, because chances are, things will happen that throw them out of balance. If you spend a whole day writing a backstory for this famous bard that your players are going to meet, and they just end up killing him in his sleep, you're going to get frustrated. Trust me, this has happened to me before. You should work with key ideas for characters, not full descriptions. Make bullet points for NPC characteristics. The bard is arrogant, selfish, and he just wants your party to do all the work for him while he takes all the credit. Short and sweet descriptions will help you make more characters. Plus, if they ignore them, or just kill them, it's no loss to you. You can make characters like this a lot easier. Become accustomed to working on the spot by making your game more streamlined. Nothing stopping your party from saying, hey, this is a dumb quest, let's just not do it. Let them quit on things that they don't want to do. Remember, at the end of the day, it's about their fun, not the story you're trying to tell. Because if they don't like the story you're trying to tell, maybe you shouldn't be telling that story. Now, there are a dozen other tips that I could think to give you guys, but most of them just come with playing lots of games with lots of different people. Now, I personally enjoy DMing more than playing a regular character myself, and I think you guys could end up feeling that way too. So don't be afraid, take your time, and remember that it's way easier than you're making it out to be. Also, please make sure that you have fun. Excelsior!